Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our hearts to hear your word, O Lord. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Well, we aren't going to beat the Baptist this morning. That's all right. John said it's okay. The day of Pentecost had come, and there were a lot of converts to the Christian faith. So many, in fact, that they joined together and formed a community of faith that met and sang praises to him, and they, they pooled their resources. Uh, one of my theology professors, uh, biblical professors, said, you know, if you really look at this passage, uh, it's about communism. Uh, now, not the communism that we know, but it is holding things in common. Um, so that's about as far as it goes. But... They, they had things in common, and they, they fed all these widows and orphans. They took people off the street and introduced them to Christ. And they fed them, and they worshipped with them, and they discipled them, and they helped them to become Christians. The earliest creed, as I told you, was Jesus is Lord, and they learned that. And they shared together with the disciples who had been there when Jesus went around teaching and preaching. Well, they had been there for a while, and one of the the disciples came and said, you know, we need to replace Judas. We need to find somebody to replace Judas. And there there were kind of some qualifications. They had to be one that had been with the disciples and had seen Jesus. And, and so they cast lots, and um, it fell on uh, Barnabas. Now, in my opinion, Barnabas is one of the unsung heroes of the Christian faith. I wish we had more people like Barnabas in the church. He is indirectly responsible for two-thirds of the New Testament. Because when when he went to Antioch, the disciples sent him to Antioch. And he went there and he began to help the church. They They had sent a messenger to Jerusalem that they needed help. They needed someone to come and guide them in their Christian faith. And so Barnabas went. And for some reason or other, He felt it necessary. He said, I need some help. Well, he knew who to go to. And so he left and he went to Damascus. And he got Paul. Now, we're not sure what Paul was doing at this time. He was probably practicing his trade as a tent maker. And so Barnabas went and got him and said, we need you. Saul, we need you. So he went back to the church. Now, we don't know what the reason was, Paul, for going there, except that God told Barnabas to go get him. That's the only thing we can figure out. As somebody pointed out this morning, he was from Cyprus and probably spoke Greek better than any of the other disciples. So he, but we don't know what caused the problem, but he had to go get Paul, and Paul came in, and the church began to grow under Paul's leadership. 
They began to go out into the community and bring others back in to the fold. They taught people that Jesus is love. We went to see um, the, the movie, The Apostle Paul. Anybody gone to see that yet? Go, yeah, nobody? Okay. Well, go. Ellen liked it. I wasn't so crazy about it, but there was one scene where Luke is talking to Paul in prison. Paul's in chains in prison. And Luke is there with him writing the book of Acts, basically. And he's writing, and, and some of the young people, the younger men in the church were angry because of the way they were treating and persecuting Christians. Nero had burned down half of Rome and blamed it on the Jews, and the Christians got caught in that. They would take people and they would tie them to a post, and they would soak them in oil and set them on fire. That's how they were killing people, putting Christians on poles and burning them. They were upset. They wanted to get Paul out of prison. And Paul told Luke to go and tell them that hate, hate will not help. They are to love everybody. You understand what that means? Paul says we are to love everybody. To be forgiving and compassionate. Now, um, I have a friend, y'all probably know him, Kelly Pope. Y'all know Kelly? Used to be with the Methodist Hour. Anyway, uh, Kelly, used to, he sang a lot. And, and, and old, old, old Kelly uh, said to, sent my daughter a letter when she was born and said, I don't, I don't like your daddy, but I love him because Jesus said I have to. <laughs> well, he was just kidding, but... That's the way it is. We love people because Jesus says we have to. We're called to be Barnabas. Let's just suppose for a minute that you're a Sunday school teacher or a mentor for somebody in confirmation. You don't know what your witness to that person might be, how they might turn out. You don't know how that person, what that person can accomplish in his or her life. You don't, you don't have any idea. They may, they, these children may, may grow up to be part of the great revival movement that I hope takes place in the next generation. Pray that it takes place now. Come Lord Jesus. You don't know and when you, when you are mentoring these people, what exactly is going to happen in their life? When they accept Jesus Christ and you walk them through the Bible stories that become part of their life, you never know what your influence on that person might be. Lord, I pray for more Barnabases in the world. Paul is important. Well, as a matter of fact, Luke traveled with Paul and Luke wrote down what Paul was talking about and it starts off the, the book of Acts starts off talking about Barnabas and Paul if you look when he writes that he, Barnabas and Paul left and went on a missionary journey that's what happened when Paul came to Antioch the church became strong so strong, in fact, that they wanted to send Paul and Barn or Barnabas and Paul out to do a missionary trip around the world. And so they took up an offering and sent it to Jerusalem, and, and that church grew. But Barnabas is always mentioned first in the first part of Acts. Barnabas and Paul. At the middle, about the middle of Acts, you see a very subtle change has happened. 
Luke begins to say Paul and Barnabas because of Paul's influence in the Christian world at that time. Paul became the leader But two-thirds of the New Testament would not have been written if it had not been for Barnabas. Send us more Barnabas, Lord. Make us to be like Barnabas. I pray for you that you will find your purpose, that you will help someone you know, we, when, when, when people come here to get food, we don't just give them physical food that they can eat. We, we give them a Bible. And we're almost out, aren't we, Judah? Almost out of Bibles. And, and we give them a Bible. Sometimes they ask for it, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they ask for prayer and people pray with them. Meals on wheels. The people go in. They don't just go up and drop the box off. They go in and they witness to that person. They, they spend a little time with them. we got people that do things like that all the time. we got people uh, back during um, the height of the flu season, the word came down that uh, Forest General really didn't want ministers to come visit those people who had the flu. But we had people going in the church, from the churches going in anyway. We have people that go visit in the nursing homes. We have people that go visit in the hospital. We have people that go visit folks at home. We have a ministry of taking care of people when they've had a death in their family or when they're sick. We, have, we, we try to provide a meal for them. All of these things are great. They help and encourage people to... to, It's part of the body. These things happen because it's part of the body of Christ. Be Barnabas. Be Barnabas for somebody today. Barnabas loved the Lord. And Barnabas loved Paul. He didn't care about the spotlight. He didn't care. You can get a lot done if you don't care who gets the credit. Be Barnabas. Be Barnabas for somebody. Let us pray. Lord, we call on your Holy Spirit to fill us and to help us be encouragers like Barnabas. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.